What's up kids? Mr. Hartsfield here. Um, welcome back. Two videos in one week. What a treat. Uh, today I wanted to focus on pawns and looking at pawn structure and pawn weaknesses today. Um, I'm still on quarantine. I am okay. I got my test results back and I am COVID negative, but because I was exposed, I still have to uh, take a leave, which kind of stinks because I, I like working. Um, but anyway, I figured with this downtime, I might as well give back to my students by uh, trying to pump up our chess program uh, and getting word out there. So you may be getting some notifications soon uh, through different apps and stuff about our uh, chess club here, the AB Swindlers. So anywho, today I want to focus on pawns, uh, looking at pawn structure and pawn weaknesses. So let's look at a first pawn weakness. I'm going to kick some of these guys off. So this pawn is called an isolated pawn. He is isolated because he has no friends on either side of him. No friends here, no friends there. The D and F pawn are missing. So he is isolated all by himself. And that's a weakness because pawns like to stick together in little clusters um, that we call pawn chains. So this is a pawn chain. We got three pawns working together. This guy has that guy's back. This guy has that guy's back. This guy is the caboose, but he's protected by a rook. So this is a pawn chain. Pawns are more powerful together, and you want to keep your pawns together if you can. This guy is by himself. He's weaker. He's uh, a prime candidate to get picked off to be a free cookie. So don't let that happen, okay? That's, that's one pawn weakness. Another pawn weakness would be doubled pawns, okay? So say in the beginning of the game, this guy made a capture. Now you got two pawns stacked up against each other or on top of each other. Uh, the pawn in the back, he's very hard to move and do anything with. Um, and, and your friend in the front here doesn't have anyone protecting him. Maybe you could move another pawn up there. But it's not terrible. This happens probably the, the most frequently of all the pawn weaknesses. But try to avoid it if you can and try to inflict this on your opponent when you can. Uh, what's even worse than a doubled pawn is an isolated double pawn. So this is terrible. You don't want this. Uh, no friends anywhere for either of these guys. These are just sitting ducks. So hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but it, it does sometimes. Uh, the next thing we can look at is a backward pawn. So a backward pawn would be, uh, let me see, would be this guy right here. This is a backward pawn. He's backward. We could even have this guy right here. He is backward because he has no friends, kind of like an isolated pawn. So he has no friends, Mr. E pawn here, uh, behind him. He has friends in front of him, which is cool. Uh, but those friends are not doing anything for you. They're not taking care of you. He's doing all the heavy lifting, watching their backs. Nobody's watching his back. He's backwards. Uh, what's even worse with this pawn is that if he was to take a step forward, he's going to get gobbled up. Um, so he has... Ah, he has nothing good going for him. It's a sad, sad backwards pawn. All right, not what you want. Uh, what you do want is a passed pawn. P-A-S-S-E-D, passed. Uh, or a passer, sometimes they're called. Uh, a passed pawn is this guy right here. He's passed a passed pawn right now. That means he has nobody in his path, no other pawn, I should say. There is a, a rook in his path, but this is still considered a, a passed pawn because uh, no other pawn is blocking him in front of his uh, his path here on his same file, and there's no one uh, to the side of him. Uh, this guy on the G the G file is not a passed pawn. Yes, there's there's no one in front of him, and he could run away, but he has this guy on an adjacent file on the F file uh, that would block him if he was to try to step up and promote. Okay. So H file is a pass pawn right now. G file is not. If this, you know, F pawn was gone, ah, F pawn was gone. Now we got two passers. Um, in the end game, a lot of times the game is decided if you're playing a well-matched opponent and no one gets checkmated. The game is decided in the end, uh, a lot of times by a passed pawn, a pawn that can shoot across and promote and uh, get you that victory. All right, that's kind of all I want to talk about with pawns today, but I did want to play uh, a game and maybe kind of focus on pawn structure while I'm playing. I do want to find a lower rated player with some time to spare. 30 minutes is a little long. 
And I, I like to play lower players. Uh, yeah, let's just play this guy real quick. I just play lower players because most of my students are lower play, play, uh, lower rated. Uh, I'm going to play this game kind of fast because we only have three minutes. Um, here we go. That's an interesting already. We got some stuff going on. Do I take? Do I not take? I'll take. Time is limited. All right. Boom with tempo. Let's see. All right. That was interesting. Uh, target. Do we have... Oh, cool. There is an increment here. Uh, that's a fun trick. And I'll, I'll analyze this game after we're done uh, to talk about pawn structure. There we go. So here's this is going to create a pawn weakness right there. And he's going to... He auto-moved. Cool. All right. So this will be a fun game to analyze. I didn't realize there was an increment. So ev after every move you make, you get two extra seconds. So we all start with three minutes on the clock. Uh, but every move is going to get you to two seconds after that. So he still has quite a bit of time. So you don't have to move that fast. All right. Good stuff. So he's going to look like pick up my knight if I don't defend him. So I'm going to defend him. I don't give away free cookies if I can't avoid it. And I also, move if I move this guy, I have a nice discovered attack with my queen looking at this uh, knight. Or not knight, rook. Ah, okay. So he's trying to block my, my exit strategy here. Uh, but I'm just going to castle and get nice and safe here. So he's playing. Ah, there we go. So he's pinning my piece. That's smart. Good stuff. Uh, that's fine. Do it. Nah. Do I want to do that? Hmm. Give him a pesky check. See what you do with that. So my goal here is to kind of mess up his castling. He could probably just block with his, his knight here. That'd be smart. There you go. Now I got extra pressure on this pin piece. I don't want to move this piece uh, because he will... Then capture my my queen here, but I could maybe do some fun stuff like that. Attacking his queen. Sorry, my commentary on this video is not the best yet. Okay, uh, he didn't realize I have him in check now, so this check is going to make all the difference. So he can't just gobble up my queen, but I have his. All right, there we go. That was good, and he's still taking his time. He's 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 doing good. All right, I definitely want to move my queen now. I can't just take his bishop. I also want to keep my... I can't keep my knight, unfortunately. But I do need to move my queen out of the way. So I'll do that. All right. That's looking pretty good. Cool. Cool can't really take any of these pieces I do I would like to get my my bishop out maybe give him a pesky little check ski fortunately this this knight is doing a good job defending okay all right I get I get you I'm feeling you do I got any tricks here hmm yeah nice that check all right this would be a fun little fork and I'll pick up this bishop but he could also no he can't do nothing about that never mind and I can get my rooks activated here all right there you go I can just pick him up with my queen put him in check I like that that's scary, right? Queen, so close to your king. Got his homies over here. Boop. Check ski. Uh, let's do another. Yeah, let's just let's just be mean and gobble up some pieces. There we go. I got this. Uh, we don't care about that. Not a big deal. He's not happy about that. And there's checkmate. Oh, no, it's not. He can escape. What was I thinking? 
Crazy guy. Hmm. Well, that's okay. We'll survive. We'll still get him. This is going to be a sloppy ending, but it'll, it'll be okay. Um, let's see. Very sloppy. There we go. Make him make him trade with me. Oh, he's not gonna trade, huh? That's fine. Should have done that a while ago. Um, yeah, he's smart. He's trying to make real quick moves right now. There we go. All right, that that one took me a little bit. A little bit longer than it should have. I even made a blunder. All right, let's look at this game and let's talk about pawn structure as we do it. All right. So a nice e4 opening. I respond in kind with e5. Kind of my go-to, um, especially with beginner players. Um, just a solid response. Uh, he does this move. I I, I rarely see this. Um, and when I'm playing only a three-minute game, I don't have too much time to think about it. Uh, kind of like a gambit going on. Um, center game, it says over here. Center game. Uh, so I, I took, um, which is a book move, apparently. Well, I didn't know. Uh, wasn't expecting my opponent to do this. And sometimes when you play with lower rated players, um, that's what happens. So usually we take this time in the beginning to develop. This wasn't a bad move. It's a book move. So it's, it's a move that is accepted and it's decent. Um, just not, not something that's super common. So I took back, and he came in with his queen and gobbled it up. So right now, I mean, he's looking pretty good. He has his, he's definitely controlling the center. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is controlled. Um, but he loses what's called tempo here. And yeah, we're, we're trying to focus on uh, the pawns today, but uh, tempo is, is another topic that's pretty popular. Tempo is kind of like um, your speed, uh, your development, um, you want to always, you always want to be like one step ahead. So with this move, I'm developing my knight, but I'm also attacking his queen. I'm doing two things at the same time, and unless he wants to lose his queen, he needs to move it. And when he moves it, he's going to learn uh, lose the opportunity to develop a different piece um, to improve his his structure. It, so he loses a little bit of time. He loses a move because he has to get his queen out of the way. Um, so now if you look at it, we look pretty much even. Like he has his pawn out, which is fine. Um, but that's it. And I have I have a piece developed. And now it's my turn. So I get to develop another piece. Uh, and I wanted to attack this pawn. So that kind of forces him to defend his pawn, which he does. Um, so we have not quite an isolated pawn. If if this F pawn was gone, then he would be isolated. But he's still he's still an okay pawn. All right. So I did this move to try to try to illustrate our our pawn structure theme. So my idea was eventually I would like to take this this piece and trade. Um, and some people don't like trading bishops for knights. I do, and especially when it's going to cause them to uh, pick up the piece with their pawn and give them doubled pawns and not just that but it'll be double isolated pawns so let's let's watch how that unfolds um he does this move this is a cool move uh he's just trying to to kick my my bishop away we see that with like the um the paul morphy defense when we're doing our uh what's that called when they're doing the roy lopez the paul morphy when he pops him out uh to attack so that that's kind of that move but on the other side of the board um so I take, for the reason I, I just talked about, I want him to get doubled pawns, and not just that, but double isolated pawns. So my queen side right now, if you look at my queen side compared to his, if you took all of our pieces off the board, and you had to play with just the king and the pawns, what side would you rather play with? And that's what's going to happen in, a, in an actual chess game. We're going to trade, 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 trade pieces until we're left with just our kings and some pawns. So if that was all that magically happened right now, uh, my queen side here would demolish his uh, queen side. Uh, he, he has a majority, if we're looking at the left side, he has a pawn majority. So he would have three or four versus my three pawns. 
So his his king side is looking better than my king side, but his queen side is way worse off than my queen side. I got four all together. He has three, and two of them are isolated doubled pawns. So I'm gonna dominate the end game with my pawn majority on this side, and that's it. That's gonna happen to him. Um, so that's what you kind of want to think about. Uh, it doesn't seem like a big deal right now, but when you get to the end game, pawn structure is really gonna matter. So that's why you gotta start thinking about that. Also, yeah, look at that. I just picked up a free cookie right here. No one's defending this guy. His queen retreated, um, and that's also part of the reason why I wanted to make that trade. So I'm not just trading a bishop for a knight. I'm trading a bishop for a knight. I'm trading for a better position because his pawns are garbage now. He has garbage pawns on this queen side. And I get to gobble up a free cookie, which puts me up uh, one point of material. And now if we went to the end game and all the pieces were magically off the board, I'd still have four against their messed up three. And then our king side would be an even uh, three versus three match, okay? So that's my thought process uh, with those moves. I was thinking specifically about uh, pawn structure during that, those uh, exchanges. Also now, if you notice, he has this free cookie hanging there too. Um, so I, I was gonna gobble it up if I was given the opportunity. Uh, he kicks me away and I gobble it up because I'm looking for free cookies. Uh, so now he has a two pawns versus my four pawns. So these guys are nice and tight. Uh, nobody has had to move yet, which is okay. Uh, I'm not controlling the center yet with my pawns, uh, but I think I have pretty good compensation for that. I got two pieces developed um, up, up by two points. So looking pretty strong. Uh, this is a good move, just getting his queen out. And uh, actually it told me that this move was a mistake. Um, probably because I was being greedy. I'm sure there was some way that they could have really punished me for that, but they didn't. Maybe if they did this and I had to move, they would gobble up a free pawn. I don't know, maybe. So, queen is getting threatening over here. I know I gotta either move this guy or defend him. So I just choose to uh, defend, which the computer again is saying is a mistake, but we're not gonna explore that today. Um, this was just a kind of a silly pawn move. Uh, maybe he was, I don't know, I could still just move there. Maybe he's taking away that, that space for me because if that happened, he would recapture. I'm not sure if that's what he was thinking um, during that move, but maybe. We've got a nice castle, trying to get my king safe. This is what I want. I want his king exposed on an open file. You don't want your king exposed on an open file, especially with a big bad rook right here ready to jump over and put you in check uh, so I, I like that um, and that pawn on the e-file uh, is not doing his job of defending his his king uh, and neither is mine but my pawn not being there is uh, an asset to me right now because i have quick little you know checks i could do along the e-file his missing e-pawn is a huge weakness because his pawn or his king is exposed that's not good that's not what you want um, you want to be castled with an open file Staring at a king, you don't want to have your king standing out in the open. All right, this is a cool little move. I like this. Um, he is doing a nice little uh, skewer here. He's looking to attack my queen. So this guy is pinned down. He's stuck. It's not an absolute pin because I could move him if I wanted to, which I do later. Um, but it is a relative pin and it's on my queen. So that's the best kind of relative pin you can have. Uh, so I respond with a check. Because uh, no matter what, he can't really do much. He has to move his king. His king can't go here. His king can't go here. So he only has a choice of two squares for his king to go. Or he can bring his a piece out to defend. He could have done either of those. Let's see. But he used his um, knight. Which was smart too. Because now he has, like, technically, he has three attackers on this knight. And I only have one defender. Now this attacker doesn't really count. Because he put himself in an absolute pin. So as long as my rook is here, uh, this knight can't do anything. Um, so I, I make a counter threat. I'm just saying, hey, you know what? I want to mess with your queen, do something about it. Uh, this queen still wants to keep this, this piece under pressure, uh, but now he's, he's in danger because my, my knight's here attacking him. 
so he says, you know, I'm going to make that trade. No big deal. Um, and maybe he thinks we'll just, um, you know, trade some pieces and he'll be up. He can't do that. So he could do that. Um, and that's looking pretty good for him. Now he's up by seven because he still has his queen. Uh, so if that's how the trade went down, that'd be wonderful. But that's not what happened. I took his queen and I don't think he was counting on that trade coming with check. So I think what he thought was that he would just, you know, take take my piece, my queen, and then maybe I would have a messed up pawn structure too when I took back. But he didn't realize probably that I was doing doing so with check. So that throws off his timing, his tempo, and he has to respond to that. He doesn't get a choice. So he moves, I move into check, and the rest of the game is kind of a sloppy version of Mr. Hartsfield stumbling through life, trying to get the checkmate, doing a lot of chasing. Uh, but yeah, overall, this was a sloppy checkmate. I should have done better. I, I can do better than this. This was, I should have just dominated and got him in a couple moves. So my apologies for my slop, but uh, you know, that's that's real life here. So I hope you learned maybe a little bit about pawn structure and uh, looking out for those weaknesses and being able to exploit the weaknesses in your opponent. So Avoid isolated pawns, avoid doubled pawns, avoid isolated double pawns. Those are terrible. And uh, try to inflict those weaknesses on your enemies. We didn't get to see any backwards pawns, I don't think, today. Uh, but whatever. Or past pawns. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about pawns. I'll see you guys, I don't know, the 4th when I come back. In the meantime, sign up on chesskids.com. Uh, join our Google Classroom and become a part of our chess club. All right, kids, I will see you later.